eight overweight volunteers are taking part in an experiment. One that involves travelling back in time. Good morning, ladies. Good morning, sir. A hundred years ago, women's waists were ten inches smaller than today. I should never have had that one last kebab. And the average man was a stone and a half lighter. Oh, easy. Could it be that our ancestors had the answer to the obesity epidemic of today? It's discipline, isn't it? That's all it is. And I got no discipline. Here at Sir Roy's Institute of Physical Culture, the equivalent of a modern health farm, the slimmers are spending 24 days competing to lose weight. Yes. Just over a spend. Three are following a Victorian diet of the 1860s, based almost entirely on meat. <laughs> Two are on an Edwardian diet of the early 1900s. They can eat what they want. One, two, three. But they have to chew every mouthful 32 times. It's not very ladylike, is it, really? It's not. No. And the final three are following the first ever calorie controlled diet from the 1920s. Two apples. <laughs> They're all learning the lessons from the past on how to get slim, keep fit, and look beautiful. <laughs> They won't know what's hit them. I think everyone's <laughs> desperate to eat. Sir Roy is about to reveal the secrets of the diets that time forgot. Fergus Drennan is a professional forager. This is my office. This is where I work. I absolutely love it out here. I forage for wild food. Here we are. Partly because I really love the environment, but I like to get involved really practically with the environment. I want to touch it, I want to smell it, I want to know about its interrelation with things. Fergus has a passion. He wants to change the way people eat in Britain. People are hooked on crap, stagnant, dead food. It's plastic. No, not nutritious. I want them to eat vibrant, alive food, packed with energy, packed with nutrition. And that is uniquely the case with wild food. But for Fergus, a wild meal isn't just a vegetarian option. He also goes searching for meat that he picks off the road. Badger is meat like any other. The only thing is, it hasn't been reared, especially for food. I call myself a vegetarian, but it's really a label, because I'm a vegetarian that eats roadkill. I want to draw people to an awareness of what they're eating. They don't know. It might be extreme, but I know what roadkill is. I know how the animals lived. I know it's natural history, I respect it, and I eat it. Mm. Flash can be many things. You don't know I'm allowed. Money. Oh, do you like it? It can be about the size of your manor, the speed of your motor, or treating someone to a manicure who'd much rather have an ice cream. Keeping still. One thing's for sure, the Brits have lost their famous reserve. They've got it, and they love to flaunt it. Meet the Perrys. If you got it, flash it. The Goforths. I couldn't live without my bow tops. And the Gills. That's 234 pounds. Flash. It's a way of life. I don't look at prices when I go shopping. This is my new GT, 120,000. Armani t-shirts, Burberry t-shirts. Let's spend it, let's enjoy it, let's treat our families. That's the bollocks, isn't it? Because one thing's for sure, we won't be taking it with us. But is it all it's cracked up to be? Oh, I don't want to be in this house, I want to get out. Been in it too long. If I could rewind it all back, knowing what I know now, I'd do everything different. It's great fun, I love it. I think everybody should have it. Over the UK, there are thousands of sons and daughters whose fathers have walked out of their lives at an early age, never to be seen or heard of again. But when a child grows up and wants to find their long-lost dad, that's when it can all kick off. Now I have nothing, no name to no face. It's like looking in the directory at someone you don't know, just a name. This is basically all my life, from when I was three months old to now. And he doesn't know any of it. It's all gone and you can't get it back. 
In this series, we follow two people as they embark on what is the most difficult and momentous journey they're ever likely to experience, searching for their absent fathers. But it's not just about the search. If they meet, they will then have to face the roller coaster of emotion that comes with this brand new relationship. Each week, the couples dance and the weakest couple is eliminated by the judges. At the end of the day, we're looking for someone to represent our country in the European Championships, and that is not good enough. <laughs> so which couple will win the honour of representing their country at the toughest wheelchair dance competition in the world? You big fat chicken. I never thought that I would be able to dance again. And here we are. You like the pie? Yeah. Yes. 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 <laughs> yummy, yummy. Ooh, yeah. yummy. Actress and model Sadie Frost loves her food. Mm, that's so good. From the traditional... So you're supposed to be a trendsetter. It does taste good, though. Oh. Then... To the exotic. I, I've got it abused for the same time. Yeah. How are you going to do that? Always vegetarian, but with one weak spot. What about flying saucers? That's quite sexy squeezing these. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a gripping competition to find Britain's best young leader. And each week, our candidates have learned new skills and faced a grueling set of challenges. Why, hello? From making an impression. Hello, Michelle. I'm Amadi, an ambitious I am. Debating. It will some cost sense. far too much. Five hundred pounds per mosquito. The art of persuasion. Seriously, man, no. you've got to do the hula. And campaigning. Come on, bye. Don't be shy. Let's do the hula. Each week, the fearsome political journalist, our series judge Jonathan Dimbleby, has sent one candidate home. Your campaign's over. Your campaign's over. Your campaign's over. Now it's between Hazel and Quincy, and the winner will get to meet the Prime Minister. To win the debate, they'll have to remember their arguments and get their points across in a calm and professional way. Children aren't pests. Children aren't dogs. Children have minds. And adults can't have to stop taking control all of yeah. the time. The matter is, Hazel, that children, on a whole, aren't all bad. You just if people you have antisocial behaviour, then they deserve to be punished. It's violating your human rights. It's a hassle-free... Newsnight is a live television yeah. programme where political leaders get a grilling by Britain's top, top journalist. Sexually shameless, binge drinking, anti-social rebels. We know them as Ladettes. We like the old one night stands, can't go wrong. It's been so many I've lost count. More than I've had hot dinners, I reckon. Get pissed, shots, jumping about, arguing with someone. For some people, I am too much. It's just like, oh, this girl is just scared out of my face. They're a blight on society, and it's a phenomenon that's getting even worse. <laughs> so once again, we're turning to our traditional cure for this very modern problem, reopening the doors of Eggleston Hall, a tough 1950s finishing school where the teachers are unwavering in their antiquated methods. Telima grandiflora atropa purea. Excuse me! Never, Sorry. ever do that in front of me ever again. Oh, All right. But this time, the intake are ruder. I'm not going to change. You're going to change. I'm going to change when you're going to change. Drunker. <laughs> looser. I'm going for a game, Ben. And more unteachable than ever before. You want to? I give it one. Into bed. Just spat on the floor. I think this is probably the worst of the worst. Mm. 